Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the second edition of my radar class of meteorologist Jason Fraser. Good to be with you. As always, I like to start off with a joke. So here's my joke for today. What did the one thermometer say to the other thermometer? What do you think? All right, here's what that thermometer said to the other thermometer. You make my temperature rise. I don't know. I think that that was funny. All right, so as always, I love your weather questions. You can feel free to drop me a line uh, via email at jfrazer at wkyc.com, or you can feel free to leave me a comment just below this video. So today we're going to be talking about a couple of things. We're going to do a little bit of a review of radar, and then we're going to learn how we as meteorologists identify severe weather on the radar. And I'm going to walk you through a few of the different products that we use. And then I'm going to also give you a few tricks on what to look out for for storms for how fellow meteorologists like myself know exactly what's going to happen with the weather. So are you ready to get started? Let's do it. So first, let's go through a little bit of a review for what radar is. Now, if you remember, radar is an acronym, and that basically means that it stands for something else. Radar stands for radio detection and ranging. How radar basically works, it's pretty simple. It sends out a short pulse, right? And then it hits something and then it returns back. Now, for the most part, this process happens thousands upon thousands of times every single day. But in some instances, and I'll get into this in another lesson, sometimes the beam will go out and not come back, or sometimes it'll actually hit something, be reflected down, be reflected back up to the ground, and then back to where the radar station is. Now, this doesn't happen all the time, but Again, this is very important in figuring out where exactly storms are so that we can warn you about what potential severe weather may be happening in your. Now, I also talked about dual polarization radar or dual This was what I would consider the next generation of radar because this really helps meteorologists in a lot of ways. One, it really helps us better figure out what hail or what rain or what snow is falling and exactly where, how much of it is falling. And then it also helps us figure out what we're looking at, right? So is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it debris? Is it smoke? Because it doesn't just send out one horizontal pulse, one horizontal uh, laser. Uh, what it does is it actually will send out two different pulses. So it'll send out one vertically and then it'll also send out one horizontally. And that's how we're able to tell what is going on in the upper atmosphere. So there's a couple of products or a couple of, I'll just call it different things that we can do with the dual pole radar that we couldn't do, that we couldn't do with the original radar. So my favorite thing is something called correlation coefficient or CC. And a lot of times, You'll see meteorologists use this either doing uh, tornado coverage or even sometimes when you have a big, big winter storm that comes through. But sometimes that storm not only has some snow, but it also has some rain. Now, all correlation coefficient is, it just compares how similar something is to another value, right? And we do this based on computer models. So let's say I have my cell phone in a remote, well, all right, well, my cell phone will get one particular value, and then my remote control will actually get another value. And based on how we're comparing it is what colors you'll actually see here on the radar. Now, one of the things I wanna show you here is the red values basically mean that everything around here is pretty much the same. But when we start seeing some of these yellowish colors and even some of these bluish colors, that means that there's something going on there. Now, if we're monitoring a tornado, that's usually how we're able to see whether or not there's debris moving around. And it's also a pretty good indication of where a storm is going to go as well. So if we've noticed that, let's say for instance, the blue was originally over here, but it's been moving this way, well, we can warn all the people in Winchester that, hey, something's coming your way.
One of the other interesting things that we can use on dual pole radar is something called differential reflectivity. Say it with me, differential reflectivity. Now that is a really, really hard word, right? Or I should say two words, but basically what this does is something very similar to correlation coefficient. So we have put on the radar certain uh, values and we put certain corresponding colors to those values. And based on what color comes up or what number comes up, we can figure out where the updrafts of a storm are. So you might remember what updrafts are. Those are those really, 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 really strong winds that head where? Upwards, exactly. All right. We can also figure out how big and uniform the raindrops are. Now, a lot of times you may look outside and the raindrops look like they're falling and they all look like they're the same, but they're not. And as some of you may have noticed, when you're out in the park sometimes, you'll get a big splat on your arm and then you'll get little small, tiny looking raindrops that'll fall after that. A lot of that is due to either friction or what else is going on in the upper atmosphere, but we can tell that just by looking at the radar. We can also do a pretty good job of identifying snow as well with differential reflectivity. The other thing uh, that we use sometimes is something called specific differential phrase, right? Oh man, that sounds like a real big mouthful, right? All right. Well, basically what that helps us do is it helps us figure out what changes are going on within a cloud. So if there's a change in rain size in those little raindrop sizes, we can figure out what's happening. We can also figure out where the heaviest rain is going to be falling. Now, you might be wondering, well, why do we care about that? Well, the reason why we care about that is because sometimes we want to warn our fellow neighbors or your family about what potential flooding may be coming our way to because as you know, it's just like putting water in a cup, right? Most of us have no problems if there's only a little bit of rain that falls and you know what, it only falls maybe, you know, I'll say a quarter of an inch. That doesn't cause any flooding. But if I were to fill this cup all the way up, what would eventually happen? It would overflow and it would spill everywhere. And that's the same thing that happens in your neighborhood. The grass, the concrete that's in front of your house, it all has a maximum amount of water that it can all take in. And once that amount is reached, that's when you start getting a whole bunch of flooding and whatnot. And specific differential phrase helps us figure out where that process is going to happen. Then we also have something called one hour accumulation. And I also like this too, because we can figure out how much rain has fallen in one particular area and how long? Yeah, within an hour. So sometimes what you'll see me do live on the news is sometimes I'll be able to just touch like this particular area right there. And I'll be able to say, hey, just within the last 30 minutes, uh, they received anywhere between two tenths or two thirds of an inch of rain. I love that. That's some now, let's talk about severe weather, right? So when I talk about severe weather, I'm really talking about really, 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 really strong thunderstorms, the type of thunderstorms that really wake you up at night. The other thing that I'm talking about are tornadoes. So I'm gonna give you a couple of things that we meteorologists look for when we're looking on the radar. I'm not gonna give you all the secrets because I don't want you to take my job, but I do want you to know what we look for. So when we're looking at a storm system like this, uh, that's on your screen, there's a couple of things that we're looking for. So number one, we're looking at all of the different colors that are popping up here, right? So the darker the colors that you see there, usually there's an indication that we're starting to see some heavier rain showers. So if they're light green, I'm not gonna say it's not severe because we could potentially see some green pop up during a severe storm. But what I am gonna say is those darker color greens or even those reds, uh, even the pinks, uh, anytime we see pink, that's usually an indication of hail or some ice that's popping up. That's when we tend to know, okay, something's going on. One of the other things that we'll look for are these hooks that happen, particularly in thunderstorms. And what do you know 
in our atmosphere that tends to be very circular and tends to go around and around. Well, if you guess tornadoes, yep, that's exactly right. So we actually call this a hook echo, all right? And whenever we see this with uh, on the radar, that's when we know that, well, there's some twisting and turning there, and this is all because of where the winds are coming into. They're basically moving from one part of the storm to another. The other thing with tornadoes is not all the time, but some of the time you'll also see some hail. And again, remember I said that that's indicative of some of the pinks that you see there as well. One of the other things that we as meteorologists, when we look at radar, we're also looking at the shape that the storm is taking, all right? So sometimes you'll see a storm, it'll look like this, and there's not really much going on. But if we start to see the storm form like this, okay, we call, we call that a bow echo, um, that's when you know things are starting to get a little crazy. Things are gonna get a little intense here, all right? Um, and if this actually happens, um, this is what we call a derecho. And I'll get into that much later on in some future lessons when we start talking more about severe weather. But usually when storms do this kind of thing where they form what looks like a bow, that usually means there's a couple of things going on there. Not only are we starting to see some very big storms develop, but also we're starting to also see a lot of winds uh, that are really kicking up. So that's when we usually like to warn people in front of that storm, maybe 10, 20, or 30 miles away to get ready. Now, one of the other things that we look for on radar is how quickly these storms are moving. Now, remember I said in other lessons, storms move usually from where to where. Well, usually storms move from left to right, from west to east in the United States. Other parts of the world, they tend to actually move from east to west. Now this always does not happen. Sometimes you'll actually get storms that move from the northeast to southwest, but again, I'll get into that in a later lesson. But the reason why we're monitoring the speed of how something is appearing on radar is because if we notice that something is moving really, 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 really fast, like this fast, then that usually means it's probably not a storm. That usually means it's something else like that or sometimes it can actually be an airplane, or sometimes it could be smoke that's moving. But if we know that, you know, a storm is kind of creeping along there, just moving every minute or two, it's doing that, that's usually indicative of some type of thunderstorm that's moving. And again, remember I talked about that hook echo. Uh, again, that's also what we look at in terms of watching where that wind is going. Now, the other thing could potentially happen that we're also looking for is what else is happening around that storm. So sometimes you have what we call gust fronts, or sometimes what'll happen is you'll have one particular storm that'll develop like this, like this big boy here. Look at that, that's really big. Sometimes what it'll do is depending on the winds, you'll start to see other storms that'll develop either behind it or in front of it or on the side of it. Uh, and that's when we know that, hmm, there may be something else going on there. Now, one time I thought what was really cool was we actually saw what we called a gust front, which is basically where you get a huge gust of wind, usually is warm air, and that warm air pushes in front of the storm, and then at some point it's gonna be pushed upward, and then you start to see some more storms that develop. And I thought it was really cool to actually see that. So yeah, it's just some of the things that we look at as far as what else on that storm. All right, so any questions, comments, concerns, please send me an email. Let me know what's going on here. Uh, our next lesson is gonna be this Monday, April 13th at 9 a.m. We're gonna be talking a little bit about the sun and its impact on our climate and why the sun is so important. And then we're gonna be talking about some of my favorite things like sun dogs and sun halos and sun pillars. How do they form, right? They're really cool to actually see. And some people actually think they're scary, but why do they even exist? I'm gonna let you know about all of that. It's coming up on Monday. So until then, friends, I hope that you have a marvelous weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.